Uh, so, I'll get straight to the point today. I'm going to be talking about the Paveway bomb, specifically Paveway 4. So, in regard to what Paveway actually is, they are, well, it's not a specific weapon, so it's a series. I know that seems fairly odd when considering that this is weaponry, but it's a series of laser-guided bombs. So, P-A-V-E, PAVE, is short for Precision Avionics Vectoring Equipment, and that is precisely what it does. It uses uh, vectoring in order to ensure that a bomb is guided to a precision target. Uh, and so what this means is that it's positioning itself in the best way possible in order to basically land on a target. There isn't any uh, fuel being used, as you'd see in a rocket or a missile or anything like that. It is a gravity bomb. Uh, but that doesn't actually often limit its range hugely, considering that largely bombs are dropped from reasonably high altitudes, unless you are a uh, maverick from Top Gun. So, effectively... I'll just move back a bit. Um, effectively, the aim of a bomb, generally, or at least these sorts of bombs, is to strike a target in a penetrative manner. That is the large, largely the use of gravity bombs in the modern age, is to strike a target in a penetrative manner, in a manner that, you know, is precise, uh, that other munitions might not have the capability to do, even precision-guided munitions. So, what one really has to look at for these sorts of series are their successes. So there are various uh, missile series like Spear, which we will be covering, Brimstone. They build upon a certain idea, but Paveway is an incredibly old series uh, and an incredibly successful series that has been, I mean, it sounds like, you know, Friday the 13th, it's been revived throughout the ages and it really does evolve and it's still with us to the modern day. And the intention behind each iteration of Paveway, or this Pave concept, is vastly different. Uh, and that was sort of clear from the outset of the program. So I'll sort of start talking about it and the history behind it. So it was originally developed by Texas Instruments, which are, you know, it's not a music sort of instrument manufacturing firm. It makes bombs. It is world famous for being a brilliant uh, bomb maker, particularly for the US government, but around the planet. Uh, but in this case, they were developing for the US government. And this began in 1964. And of course, 1964, not exactly the most economically stable times. So this project began on a really tight budget. They had to be incredibly economical. And that actually played to Pave's success throughout the ages. This tight budget was an incredibly positive thing in the end. And so, you know, Texas Instruments has effectively secured itself a legacy bomb, I guess, manufacturing status and being world famous due to partially the success of the Pave program because it was able to be so economical. I mean... The PAVE po program really is synonymous with economical engineering. So, what PAVE, or PAVEWAY, I'm just going to re refer to it as the PAVEWAY program from now on, because otherwise it becomes too difficult. Um, the PAVEWAY program was originally designed to replace the fairly rudimentary Mark 117 bomb, which, you know, the original model of PAVEWAY, PAVEWAY 1, used this M117 warhead. The issue with M117 is that it's an unguided demolition bomb. And this is, you know, old equipment. As you're sort of progressing into the latter half of the 20th century, we really start to see more innovation in regard to computer technology being implemented in the engineering of pretty much anything military, but particularly munitions to make them incredibly advanced. And so the idea behind this precision bomb is that if one can find a way to use technology, to use computers, in order to allow this bomb to find its target, to track its target, and this is technology they had, then that's a brilliant thing to do. And that means that 
uh, payloads don't have to be so large because one can be more precise. It means bombs don't have to be so heavily manufactured. And it really is all in the guidance system. And that's a very positive thing. Plus, you know, reduction in collateral damage is a massively, massively advantageous thing, as is not putting your own troops in danger. Anyway, so it was replacing the M117 guided demo unguided demolition bomb. But because of the Vietnam War, it was combat tested pretty quick quickly. So only uh, a year after sort of redevelopment and testing, it was combat tested in the Vietnam War, and it performed well. And so the planning was for Texas Instruments for the Paveway program. You have Paveway One, which is this first model, and they have three planned iterations of it. So first, laser guided munitions, which is inherently for any missile, bomb, rocket, it's a terminal stage, uh, I guess, sensor. So you have uh, effectively laser lock in order to find the target and guide itself to it in the most accurate manner. But that can't be done from afar because it you know, requires effectively direct line of sight. It requires, uh, particularly back then, it to be a reasonably short distance away from the target itself, in the air that is. Paveway 2 was planned to be electro-optical uh, guidance, and then Paveway 3, infrared homing. So they all serve these sort of different, not necessarily are any above the others, but they all serve certain purposes for the potential directions that warfare could go, particularly if you're sort of looking at America's uh, mindset at this point, at which they're fighting in Vietnam, at which they're realising we may need different weapons for different scenarios. Some may need to be precision. Some may need to be for more rudimentary uh, purposes. Some may need to be mass-produced. It's not as simple as sort of using the classical uh, World War II or Korean warfare technology. Uh, while these three variants, which were sort of designed to serve a specific purpose, didn't necessarily work out in that manner, uh, because Paveway 2 ended up costing four to five times more than Paveway 1, as, you know, it would, because it's a more advanced optics system. Uh, the Paveway program has been, in other manners, continued. So, if we sort of come on to the modern age of Paveway, what we have now is Paveway 4. So, it's an incredible piece of kit. So it has dual mode uh, GPS and INS. I assume you know what GPS is, but INS is uh, an inertial navigation system. And of course it uses laser, gu laser guidance and it's still in bomb format. So you don't have uh, missile integration, you don't have rocket integration, none of this. Paveway 4 is man or was developed by Raytheon UK. Uh, and I believe it's still manufactured by them. But unlike its prior series variants from the US. It's a UK originating weapon, only being used by the RAF and RSAF, so that's the Royal Saudi Air Force. So it really is, I guess you'd say, quintessentially, you know, British, even if it did come from American origins. It's a small, it's a fairly small diameter, uh, well that's not necessarily true, but considering the sort of bombs that were being used before this, it has a smaller diameter than those at only 0 0.27 metres. It's 3.1 metres long and weighs 500 pounds. And rather than using the, uh, the original warhead, which was M117 from, you know, the sort of, uh, I guess, World War II and Korean War age, uh, it uses the Mark 82 Enhanced General Purpose Bomb Warhead, which is still, you know, that's a fairly old warhead, but nonetheless, due to the precision of Paveway 4, it still does, you know, the absolute necessary job. It's, you know, both incredibly technologically advanced and incredibly rugged in its deployment uh, and its sort of composition, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's sort of, again, this branching out from the original economical design. Uh, 
And so in regard to what it can be launched from, it can only really be launched from UK compatible programs. So that's the Harrier 2, the GR9, uh, the Panavia Tornado, the Eurofighter Typhoon, and the F-35 Lightning, currently employed by the Navy. So guidance, or the guidance system of Paveway 4, is based upon that of the four to five times more expensive Paveway 2. But it has not only, you know, has the technology improved to allow faster circuit times, but the main improvement is the improved height of burst sensor, meaning one can actually sort of judge how close something is to its target, rather than just achieving this uh, either electro lock, optical or laser lock, at which it just sort of goes down and that's all it really does. It just continues to ensure it's aligned. You can actually judge the height at which it's at. Uh, and it also employs uh, SAASM, which is Selective Availability Anti-Spoofing Module, and a GPS uh, compliant receiver. And all of this means that not only does it have better guidance, but you can also employ it for airburst, which is pretty important if you have sort of exposed targets, exposed convoys. So it can be employed in a range of... Uh, a range of ways, as opposed to just the simple we want penetrative power. Uh, so this SAASM, the anti-spoofing module, and the GPS compliant receiver, beyond this uh, height of burst sensor, means that G uh, sorry, GPS info can be decrypted much, much faster. And this is incredibly positive because it effectively means you can achieve faster computer speeds. So you can be far, far more precise, not only in the terminal stage, but in sort of the mid stages of, I guess you'd say, of the mid stages of deployment. In any case, it is pretty successful and it's pretty versatile and pretty rugged and that's a pretty positive thing. And so as you have this GPS guidance toward the mid stage, and again, I do say mid stage, considering that pretty much any mid-stage is the terminal stage for a missile of a bomb. Uh, I'm going to say the mid-stage, let's say the mid-stage is sort of the point post uh, dropping of the bomb. The mid-stage, it uses this GPS guidance, use it, uh, utilizing SAASM, but towards the end it really does rely on that laser guidance, which is, of course, always in the terminal phase. I mean, in regard to what's to be said about Paveway 4, I think particularly considering the history of the project, it is reasonably economical for a bomb, for something with such penetrative power, uh, and again, it's rugged, it is a bomb, we're not deploying cruise missiles here, which employ incredibly sort of complex technology, require a lot of maintenance, require a lot of fuel, uh, and require, I guess you'd say, complex engineering in order to keep them relevant it performs as it needs to it can have penetrative power it can have airburst power it's pretty much a mainstay of the uk military of the uk air force and it has been for a long time the royal air force has utilized it in many wars and it's been incredibly useful because it is that sort of old reliable uh, rugged weapon which in you know, it is incredibly useful, it's impressive, and it's accurate. In regard to how we could improve this, how could we improve Paveway 4? Well, uh, primarily, bunker busting capability, which, you know, despite Paveway 4's sort of, you know, incredibly positive penetrative power, the UK does tend to utilise the £2,000 Paveway 3 bomb which is, you know, specifically designed for bunker busting. So, the thing to do would be give it more bunker busting capability and give it more range, perhaps even a built-in propulsion system so it can be used in a standoff fashion, keep that sort of rugged penetrative power with even more precision, with even more range. And I will talk about that when I talk about Spear 3 in four-odd videos' time.